Thank you. Thank you everyone uh, for taking the time to be here today to take care of your own mental health, your all, all well-being, um, your whole well-being. The intention of this series is to give you the tools and practice to protect yourself from stress, be more present, um, activate the relaxation response, and regulate your emotions with mindfulness meditation. So what is the difference between mindfulness and meditation? Mindfulness, you can think of more as a quality of mind or a mental state. Um, it was popularized in the West by John Kabat-Zinn. You may have heard his name before. He defines it as the awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose in the present moment, non-judgmentally. And of course, many of us get that, okay, we've got to be here in this present right here, but then we start the big, all the chatter in the mind, and that's where the non-judgmentally comes. So you don't want to be in the future, you don't want to be in the past, and you don't want to be um, judging yourself during it. And that's really uh, the crux of the practice there. And then meditation is the practice that helps us be more mindful. So this is how we sharpen our knife, right? This is how we... Um, rosin the bow. This is how we get better and fine tune our instrument, which is our mind. Um, it's kind of like a fresh, clear snow over the brain, right? So that everything gets um, settled down and you can focus and uh, use the brain how you want to use it, which is really incredible skill to have. Uh, we don't have to be do we don't have to do meditation to be mindful, right? So, um, for those of you who haven't practiced meditation before, that's okay. You can still be mindful in your everyday life without doing meditation, but meditation makes it a lot easier. So it will happen a lot faster. So for the purpose of this series, we'll be doing both. Um, we'll, we'll become aware of our current thoughts, feelings, and surroundings, and accept this awareness and openness with curiosity in a non-judgmental way. So that's kind of our goal. Um, and to just bring ourselves into the, the present moment where we can focus, feel better without judgment. So with continued practice, just Rome wasn't built in a day. This doesn't happen just like that. Although some people have epiphanies and sudden um, inspirations when they meditate. Um, that can happen at any time, but it is a continued practice that we do. We will become less stressed, less reactive, less fearful, less anxious. Our heart rate will lower. Think we'll have a better outlook on life. All of these things do happen as you practice these. Um, if you've ever tried to meditate before and felt like you couldn't do it because you couldn't stop your thoughts from going around and around in your brain, then you're in the right place. So that's what we're here for is to learn how to do that. It's a skill that you develop just like any other skill. And um, that's kind of the human condition is to be in the monkey mind, as they call it. And once we have the awareness that we are in our thoughts and we disidentify from the thoughts, that's where the true practice really begins. So welcome everyone. We just kind of went over some of these um, benefits, but definitely it can help in all areas of your life. You know, if you're someone who's got hypertension or, you know, TMJ or like a chronic irritable bowel, migraines, I know you've tried everything else, but I guarantee you that mindfulness and meditation is going to help you in ways that other things have not been able to help you. So we're going to start with just getting right here in this present moment and tuning into how we're feeling right now. This is important because if we don't know how we're starting out, we can't kind of measure where we are at the end. And if you're pretty disassociated or detached from your body, from your emotional well-being, um, and if you kind of just, you know, go through the world with like checking off one task after another, and then at night you get to lay down and all of a sudden everything's going through your mind and you're like this right? So you may not be super in touch with what your feelings are. And um, it's really helpful 
to have that kind of connection. That's what we want to work on. So if you would like to, you can share in the chat where you are today. For me, I'm feeling pretty relaxed and um, motivated today. So I got, I got a second win today and that's feeling pretty good. Um, and I feel pretty light, not as heavy as I was at the er earlier this week. So that helps me kind of monitor where I am and how these practices will shape how I feel at the end. If you want to share where you are today, you know, that connection helps us feel um, more, when we feel connected to other people, that also helps us regulate and feel part of a community, right? Okay, so Laszlo saying interested and overwhelmed, stressed and worried. Mm -hmm. And when we see that other people are feeling the same as we do, that helps us also uh, feel like we're not alone. Like, oh, okay, I'm not the only one feeling this way. There are other people that may be experiencing these kind of issues. Interested. Okay. Aparna, I recognize that name. I wonder if you know my husband. And uh, let's see. Any other ones that want to share, feel free to do that. Now, as you're noticing how you're feeling, the next part that I want you to tap into is how you feel this in your body. So I said that I felt lighter than I had felt um, earlier in the week where I felt a little bit of a heaviness and kind of tightness on my chest. Now, it's taken me years to get to where I can really identify those so quickly. So if you are able to do it, that's okay. That's why we're here. That's why we're practicing. We have some more people chiming in with stress, but hopeful, anxious. So I want you to tap in, Shayna, where do you feel that anxiety? Where do you, where does it show up in your body? Mm -hmm. Muscle tension, right? And where's that muscle tension showing up and what is the emotion that is related to it? So that's very important to understand. If you're feeling that tension, is it because you feel stressed? Is it because you feel um, angry? Is it because you feel overwhelmed? That's where we want to link the two. So we know, oh man, that muscle tension in my lower back, that isn't just from blah, blah, blah. It is from me being stressed out and feeling like I need to take on the whole world. Heaviness in the chest or heart. Okay. So we're all kind of getting into our bodies now. That's a great place to start from. Let's do some breathing, but I'm, with our breath today, we're going to do our belly breath to start with, and then we're going to do something called a butterfly hug or butterfly tapping. It is a somatic practice that will um, help us. It, it's a bilateral stimulation, which helps, you know, kind of balance both sides of the brain and soothe the ner nervous system. So anytime we do belly breathing, which is that deep diaphragmatic breath, we are going to reset the vagus nerve and allow everything to start regulating. So we're gonna start there and then I'll show you how to do the butterfly tap. So hands on your bellies. And you're just gonna start with shoulders down away from the ears and your feet on the ground, or if you're sitting crisscross on the ground, on the floor, that's fine too. And then you can close your eyes. Feel the chair beneath you. I want you to feel rooted, like you're right here in this present moment. Notice where you feel tension in the body and just allow that to relax for a moment. You can always pick it back up later. Let's just let it be for now. Now, as you breathe, you're gonna fill up your belly with air. And as you exhale, you're going to just empty out all of that air out of the belly. And if you have some yoga practice, um, you may know the um, Ujjayi breath, which is more of a sound breath. It comes from the back of the throat. When I teach it to, to kids, I teach it as Darth Vader breathing because it sounds like... It's very calming and very anchoring. So what you can do is you can breathe in normally and naturally. And then exhale Ujjayi. And um, one way to think of doing this is like when you fog up a mirror like that, do the same thing 
without your mouth open. So and we're just gonna connect with our breath. Allow yourself to let go um, of the morning. Just let everything be as it is. You can have an intention for this practice to just be present. Now we're gonna cross our hands and then link our thumbs like this. And these are our butterfly wings. And then from here, you're just gonna place them on your chest. So especially for those of you who are feeling the heaviness in the chest. Just gentle fluttering the wings, just tapping. And continue to breathe as you tap. And some intentions or affirmations here that can be real helpful for the body, especially if you feel anxiety, is I am safe. I am present. I am loved. I am enough. And then just slow it down. Deep breath in and out. Beautiful. And then bring the hands down. So already you should feel a little bit lighter, a little bit more into your body. The breath should also start to oxygenate the brain and the nervous system is starting to settle down. So that's all good things. So those are free and you can do them anytime you want throughout the day. You don't have to have me to help you or anyone else. This is totally there for you. Your breath, you getting into the present moment. Do it as often as you can and as often as you need to. So let's start with some big circles. We're gonna do some stretching now because when we have tension in the body and yogi, yoga, we say, our, we carry our issues in our tissues, then it's helpful when we sit down to sharpen our mind, to eliminate any distractions in the body. So go one direction and then the other direction. Notice the tendency for the jaw to start to tighten and the tummy to start to kind of tense up. When you feel that, just tell yourself, I can release. And then release. And we're gonna take our left hand and put it over right ear. So when you do this, you want your ears in line with your shoulders, drop the shoulders down away from the ears. And we're leading with the elbow. We're not leading with, we're not like pulling it down. This is gentle. So you should feel it all along here. And then we'll go to the other side. Again, lead with the elbow and stay in the same plane here so that your shoulders and your ears are lined up on both sides. So you're not leaning forward or leaning back. Soften the belly. And then come back to center. We're gonna bring our shoulders all the way up to the ears and then drop them down. <laughs> Once more. And then shake out the hands. Roll the wrists. Especially if you've been working at the computer, it's good to stretch the wrist. Yours may not go as far as mine does unless you're hypermobile. So just, you know, be okay with where you are today. Roll the wrist, inhale the arms up. 
drop those shoulders down and then we're going to bend the elbows and bring the hands in line with the shoulders now if you're tight through here if you've got a lot of stress and tension you carry it there and you're like trying to come here and you fold over like this you need to wait to do all the way down and so you can just come to about here i want to rather see this chest be open and your arms here than be here but rounded all right because then we're just stretching the back of the neck and i want to see the whole chest and the shoulders be stretched here. Inhale up and exhale down. Good. Arms back behind you, roll the shoulders a couple of times. And then we're gonna bring our knees wide and come to the edge of the chair and then drop one shoulder down and kind of twist and stretch. And then the other shoulder down. And then hang all the way over. And come back up, cross your left ankle over your right knee. Lengthen up through the spine and hinge forward here. You feel this on the back hip, that left hip, um, outside of the hip, and the piriformis, which is the muscle that is across the glutes there. And we'll go to the other side, so across the right ankle over the left knee, and then your left foot is stacked right under your knee. And push your right knee gently away from you and then hinge forward. And then come back to a comfortable position in your chair. Let's get our posture lined up. So you want to be with your back straight like an arrow. So your shoulders pretty much over your hips, feet flat on the floor. Unless you're sitting on the floor and your legs are crossed, you can get comfy and kind of stack up your hips is the best way if you're seated on the floor. Um, so you can get a pillow and put them under your hips, really kind of under your bum and your hips will kind of go up. Your chin is tucked in slightly so the ears are in line with the shoulders. Eyes closed or gazing kind of down in front of you. Tongue gently held up against the upper palate. Lips slightly apart. Teeth unclenched. Soften the belly, embody the flow of a river with the stability of a mountain. So you can just gently rest here while I go over a couple of foundational elements of mindfulness. So these are things that we're trying to cultivate as we become more mindful. And one of them is letting go, the other is gratitude. So when we cultivate the attitude of letting go or non-attachment, you can really think of it as like, you know, dropping the rock, letting go of the rope. It's a funda fun fundamental to the practice of mindfulness. When we start paying attention to our inner experience, we see that there are certain thoughts and feelings and situations in the mind that seem it, the mind seems to want to like hold on to, really clasp onto, grasp. If they are pleasant, we want to hold on to them for a long time because we think we like the way they make us feel. We want to stretch them out, conjure them up again and again and again. And if they are unpleasant, when they come up, we try to like get rid of them or prevent ourselves from having the memory because it's painful or frightening. In practice, we intentionally put aside the tendency to elevate some aspect of our experiences and to reject the others. Instead, we just let our experience be what it is. And we practice observing it from moment to moment, because that emotion, that painful uh, memory that's coming up or happy one, it changes all the time. 
you will see that this attitude will bring some spaciousness and clarity into your life. You know, some people practice the serenity prayer to help them get into that space of letting things be. And then gratitude. So the research has come out time and time again that people who uh, have gratitude journals and practice on a weekly basis have been found to also exercise more regularly, have fewer physical problems, feel better about their life as a whole, and feel more optimistic about their upcoming week as compared to those who record things about what they're stressed about or even neutral events of their lives, like just brain dumping the day. So daily discussion of gratitude results in higher reported levels of alertness, enthusiasm, determination, attentiveness, energy, sleep duration, and the quality of sleep. Grateful people also report lower levels of depression and stress, although they do not deny or ignore the negative aspects of life. So they're not just like Pollyanna, you know, rose-colored glasses on everything. They are able to deal with and process things that come up. Time, and again, it is found in scientific studies that being grateful and giving thanks has an enormous positive impact on us. It not only increases our mental well-being, it can also improve our physical health. So easy ways to incorporate this just into your daily routine is in, in your life, the next time you're faced with something you want to complain about, instead of voicing your complaint or even thinking it in your mind, find something to be grateful about instead. And in that quick little switch, we are focusing on what we're expanding on and we're changing um, the connections in our brain. Let's do a gratitude practice now. This is a mindfulness practice. So we'll just get back into our bodies for a moment if you've kind of drifted away or if your mind is suddenly on something else that you're thinking about, that's okay, it's normal. Just come back to the present. And for this mindfulness practice, we're gonna start with just recalling that if you are here on this call, you already have several things in life to be grateful for. First of all, you're alive, the most precious gift there is. Someone gave birth to you, fed you, changed your diapers, clothed you, bathed you, and taught you how to speak and to understand. If you're on this call, you have the gift of hearing. You can hear and learn, whether it's the song of a bird, or the notes of a band or the sound of your own breath flowing in and out. You have the gift of a heartbeat that's steady and regular at the moment. It's pumping fresh, life-giving blood to all of your organs. And just think about all the things that we have today that make our lives easier and more comfortable. We flip a switch and light appears. We turn a faucet and we have clean, drinkable water. Adjust a thermostat and suddenly our room gets warmer or cooler. We have a roof to keep us dry when it rains and walls to keep out the cold wind. Windows to let in the light maybe even screens on those windows to keep out insects and a warm bed to sleep in at night. We have access to a car, some sort of vehicle, and it takes us where we want to go. We have machines that wash our clothes. We have clothes to wear and places to store them. We have places to store our food at just the right temperature and help us cook it without us having to gather wood. We have indoor plumbing. We have public libraries and schools that we can learn at.
and just take a moment to reflect on all of the thousands of people who have worked hard, some without knowing you at all, to make your life easier. From those who grow our food, those who teach and care for us, those who protect us, even those who deliver the mail or news to us or dispose of our trash and waste. Maybe those who entertain us or inspire us with art, music. Countless numbers of people that make our life better. And just hold these people and places and things that you're grateful for in your heart space. Allow your breath and this feeling of gratitude to just expand throughout your body. And then bring it in a little closer to home. Maybe the gratitude that you can find for your employment. For your work environment, any of the people that you work with. Maybe it's just the comfy chair that you get to sit in every day at work. Or the coworker you have lunch with. Or the person that vacuums your carpet and takes out your trash every day. Thank the teachers, call to mind, bring gratitude for anyone who helped you get into the place where you are today. Any teachers, or mentors, family members that helped you and guided you. And expand this awareness to anyone you share your life with. This could be from extended family to people that you live with, whether they're roommates or a partner or a cat or a dog or even your plants, especially the plants. Just feel the gratitude that you have in your heart for having these things, these people in your life. It's all right there.
and gratitude for the place that you live. Maybe you have a specific coffee mug that you love to drink out of every day. Or a garden in the back. Or a dog that greets you. Or a husband or a wife, partner that is there for you. Children that love you and look up to you. And of course, all the conveniences in your home. From the bed you sleep in, to your kitchen where you can cook, nourish your body. Place where you can store and wash your clothes. Even entertainment computers to work on, TVs. It's even a little device to tell us when our, um, our orders are gonna arrive, right? So many conveniences that we have today. Just breathe into that for a few more breaths. And you can open your eyes, move your body a little bit. Notice what's happening internally, what's happening with the um, mental and emotional being, or even the physical, how you're doing after that. And as you go through the day, when you encounter these things that we often take for granted, instead, this is where gratitude practice really begins. You know, it's just the awareness. And as you have the awareness, as you go throughout your day and you see things differently, your heart begins to open. You feel more connected. You feel more um, loved and grounded. And that allows us to experience things in a more positive way, which allows some of the stress and pressure to be eliminated. And our final meditation today is our loving kindness meditation. So if you've done this with me before, you know what to expect. You basically start with self-love. And then where it's like a, you know, a pebble that you throw in a river or a pond and you see that expansion go out that ripple, we're going to start with ourselves, and then we're going to extend the loving kindness out to all beings at the end. So get a sip of water if you'd like, move your body a little bit. I bet our heart chakra is all the way open after that gratitude practice. Begin by allowing yourself to remember and open up to your basic goodness. Remember times when you've been kind or generous. If this is difficult, then look at yourself through the eyes of someone who loves you. What does that person love about you? You may even recall the unconditional love you felt from a loved one. Sometimes we need to feel it from someone else before we can find it in ourselves, right? But once you can feel an un that unconditional love from someone else, then you can tap into the self-love and your basic goodness. 
Now, as you experience this love, notice the feeling in your body. It may be a feeling of warmth in the face or maybe a smile, maybe just a sense of expansiveness. Rest in this feeling of open, unconditional love for just a few breaths. We begin by wishing ourselves well by extending words of love and kindness to ourselves. And you can just repeat this out, you know, out loud to yourself or quietly to yourself. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be peaceful, happy, and free from suffering. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be peaceful, happy, and free from suffering. And we'll extend this out to loved ones. Think of people in your life that you have great affection for. You can picture them in your mind. May they be filled with loving kindness. May they be peaceful, happy, and free from suffering. May they be filled with loving kindness. May they be peaceful, happy, and free from suffering. Now expand this love out to acquaintances. So this could just be people you see in your neighborhood, uh, people at the grocery store, your post office. May they be filled with loving kindness. May they be peaceful, happy, and free from suffering. May they be filled with loving kindness. May they be peaceful, happy, and free from suffering. Now we're gonna expand this out a little bit further to difficult people that we may come in contact with or even people we may have resentments against. Um, you can keep this surface, or surface level for now and go deeper at another time if you'd like. We're gonna wish them loving kindness. May they be filled with loving kindness. May they be peaceful, happy, and free from suffering. May they be filled with loving kindness. May they be peaceful, happy, and free from suffering. And finally, we're gonna extend that circle of love and kindness out to all beings, including animals all around the world, in the universe, as far and wide as you can go. May all beings be filled with loving kindness. May they be peaceful, happy, and free from suffering. May all beings be filled with loving kindness. May they be peaceful, happy, and free from suffering. And now we're gonna include ourselves in the last round. May we all be filled with loving kindness. May we all be peaceful, happy, and free from suffering. May we all be filled with loving kindness. May we all be peaceful, happy and free from suffering. Just rest in that awareness. Let go of the loving kindness practice and gather your attention and focus back on the breath. 
resting in the rhythmic sensation of the inhale and exhale as best you can. Allowing thoughts and feelings to just fall away and just being with an awareness of the sensation of breathing. Breathing in, I know that I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I know that I'm breathing out. Meaning I'm right here, right now. And then you can gently open your eyes. Stretch and move the body just a little bit. Maybe sip a little water. And then we're going to check back in. So just tune back in to you, your body, your emotional and mental state, and notice how you feel now that you've practiced. And as those emotions and feelings start to pop up, you can share them in the chat if you'd like. Relaxed, pain is reduced, neck still stiff, yeah. So um, Laszlo, definitely um, do some more of that stretching with the neck, but then maybe spend some time figuring out like what's connected to that stiff neck. <laughs> what are you stressed about, worried about? What's going on in the background? Relax, 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 good. And how do you feel in your body when you feel relaxed? Hopefully more at ease, less pain, less tension. Even if we've gone from, you know, like say a nine to a six, look at that improvement, you know, in 30 full minutes of mindfulness and meditation. Um, as I've said before that you can um, practice this, you know, you can always pull up these YouTubes that we're recording. But um, check out the Calm app. That's one of my favorites, even Headspace or 10% Happier. And those will give you like guided mindfulness and meditation practices for specific things that you may be working on. So that might be something um, that could really be helpful. And, you know, make it part of your daily routine. The more you practice, the better it will just kick into gear anytime you need it. So it'll just be a way of being rather than something that you have to practice for all the time. It just becomes part of the way that you live. It's more mindful and more present and less reactive. Thank you all for joining us on this uh, series. I'm sure we'll have another one um, come fall. And so I hope you'll join us back then. And thank you to Sarah and everyone at Living Well. And for all of you for being part of this and trusting me to guide you. It's been a wonderful spring together. So You'll have a great rest of your week. Namaste.